Greetings and welcome to another video in our series about Voice Attack, the Elite VA plugin and Elite Dangerous. In this episode, we're going to look at panel tracking. However, before we get into the video, remember to press the like button and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you have any thoughts or suggestions, drop a comment below. This isn't particularly easy to do because whilst we can track which panel we're looking at using the GUI focus, we can't actually tell where we are on that panel. We need to be a bit creative in how we do this. Before we look at the commands, we need to just understand how the panels work. If I pop into the game, if we look at the left hand panel, this is a good example because we've got the target tab, which throws a bit of a spanner in the works. We can go forward and we loop around, or we can go backwards and we loop around. But we can't use the UI trick to hold down the next or previous key to go to the end. If we do that, it just it just moves one spot. So that's our first problem. The second problem, and that's on this panel, is that the target tab only shows up when you have a ship targeted and it's fully scanned. We need to take that into account. The other problem we have, and this is the last one, is that the panels only reset in certain situations. So each panel has its default position, which is navigation on the left, chat on the top, and the home tab on the right hand panel. In certain situations, they reset. When you load into the game, they will their default positions. When you drop out of hyperspace, this panel will be at its default as will the top panel, but the right hand panel won't. It doesn't reset when you drop out of hyperspace. However, when you board your ship or SRV from on foot, all three panels reset to their default position. So let's have a look at the commands. Go into the profile. So we've got some new categories. We have panels general, panels left, panels right, and panels top, as well as some other commands, which we'll get to in a little bit. We'll focus on the left, right, and top for the moment because that leads us into the other commands as we go. In these three sections, they're all pretty much the same commands with just some subtle differences. You can see we've got open contacts, open left panel, navigation, ship or SRV, fire groups, inventory, status, chat, history, etc. If we go to the left one first, we can look at how we get around the targeting issue. The left panel. All we're doing is, are we looking at the correct panel, in this case, panel two? Or if the focus hasn't been set, we press the left panel key to look left. We set our loop timer to zero. And then we do our loop to say, if the GUI focus doesn't equal two, and the loop time is less than 30, we keep going. We pause for a tenth of a second. We increment the loop timer by one. And then we go back around again until either we're looking at the left-hand panel, in this case, or the loop time exceeds 30, which is three seconds. 30 times 0 0.01 gives you three. If either of those two conditions are met, the loop exits. This section here just checks to see whether or not we've hit our timeout value. If we have, it sets a variable called command timed out to the last spoken command, which in this case will be open left panel up there. It executes the command timeout command, which I'll show you in a second. And then it comes out of this command completely. So if you were to tap to the desktop, for example, the loop will fail and give us a message to say timed out. Just so everything catches up, we get a slight pause there, which is a variable pause, which is something we haven't done before. And I'll show you that in a moment as well. So let's go and look at the command timed out first which is in called commands, and it is that one there. So we set the variable in the previous command. What this is doing is just writing out to the voice stack log window, whatever was in that text variable, and then the words timed out in red text, and then we reset the variable so it's blank. And we can test the timeout to show how it works. Open left panel. 
is open left panel timed out. And if I did open right panel, it says open right panel timed out. So in the open right panel, for example, here we go. We can see it says set command timed out to last spoken command. So it picks up open right panel. And this way we can use it in any command we want to, and we don't have to keep changing anything. You just copy and paste those two lines and we're done. The other thing in there was the pauses, which is in the startup commands. What we're doing is we're setting a variable to be a decimal value. And we've got two in here at the moment. We've got pause, move panel, and wait for pause. And I'll put a little note on there what they do. This sets the pause time between tabs on the panel. So when you're moving between the tabs, you say inventory, prior groups, modules, etc. This sets that pause time. And this one down here is the one we looked at a minute ago. This sets the pause time between waiting for the panel to open. So when we say left panel, that's that pause there. This way we can change these values whenever we want to in one spot. And we don't have to go through every single command and change them. It's just a nice time saving feature. And that gets executed when we run the startup commands. You can see there, execute command pauses. And the other one in there is reset all panels, which resets the panels to the default start positions when the profile loads up. we we'll come out of that. We'll go back into the panels left. So that covers the looking left, top, and right. And then we've got the commands to go to the specific tab we want to go to. Again, these are all identical, apart from some slight variations. And the target one has a little more to it. If we go to navigation, for example, we've got our phrases at the top, change them to whatever you want to be. The first thing we do is set the required tab to be zero, because that's where we want to go to. We then set a temporary variable to be what the current value of the left tab is. That could be zero, one, or two. We then execute the open left panel command to put us on the left panel if we're not there already. We then do the panel move command. And then we set the left tab value to be zero because that's where we should be. The contacts command is the same, except we're setting the required tab to be two, because that's where we want to be, tab two. And then we should be on tab two at the end of it. And then in the target one, and as I said earlier, we can only go to the target tab if we have a fully scanned ship targeted. This is what this does. If the ship targeted scan stage equals three and the ship targeted locked equals true, we have to be on a fully scanned ship. If so, we set the required tab to be three to the temp value, do the two commands, set the left tab value to three. The transactions, same again, but with tab one and so on. How does that help us with panel tracking? Well, we go up to the panel move command. In here, this is where the magic happens. I'm not going to go into it too much here because this is a slight variation of the fire groups command we used to move the fire groups, which we did in an earlier video, which I'll link to at the end of this one. But in short, we're just working out how many positions we need to move either left or right from where we are. So that's how we can move around the panels, but we also need to be able to set the panels to our home positions. And in each section, we've got a reset command. In this case, it's reset left panel which just sets the left tab value to be zero. And then the same in the other two. We have reset right panel at the bottom there. 
and reset top panel. If you want to reset any of the panels, you need to put them into the default home position and get either reset left, top, or right. Or you can do all three of them by doing reset all panels, which literally just executes those commands. And while we're in here, we can look at these other commands, which are so we've got forward view or look ahead. So if we look at any one of the panels, we can give this command and it just puts us looking ahead. So whilst we can use our voice to move the panels, we can also use the key presses and our either HOTAS or controllers to track where we're going. And that's what these two commands do here. So they're identical, except one goes forward and one goes back. We have three sections for each of the panels, left, top, and right. In this one, we're checking the right-hand panel. If the GUI focus equals one, we want to increment the right tab by one. If the right tab is greater than or equals to eight, we know we've looped around, so we reset it back to zero. We then can check to see if we're looking at the left-hand panel. And we've got a little bit extra in here to count for the target tab. We're going to set the left tab to plus one, so we know we've moved along. If the left tab is greater than two, and the target scan stage does not equal three, and the target locked equals false, it can't be on a fully scanned ship. Therefore, the target tab can't be active. We reset the left tab to zero because we know we've looped at this point. Else, if the left tab is greater than three and the target scan equals three, we've got the ship locked and it's true. We know we're on the target tab. We set it to zero. And then we've got the top tab. Same again. If it's equal to three, we come it by one. And if it's greater than or equal to six, we know we've looped and we reset it back to zero. The previous page command does exactly the same. Instead of adding one to the tab position, it subtracts one instead. So now we can track our position on the tabs using our voice by pressing a key or by using a controller of some description. As I said at the beginning of the video, the panels do reset in certain situations, and I've accounted for that as well. If I do reset in embark we know that it resets all the panels to their default position so we do the command reset all panels in the load game it resets all the panels to their default positions and then we've got the fsd jump where we only be setting the left and the top panels. Uh, you can see there it's got one there for mothership, but I disabled it. I thought it might work in here, but it doesn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these now. That was when I was doing the testing. And the other one is when we get back in the SRV from being on foot and we reset all the panels in there. So that should touch would cover most of the eventualities of resetting the panels. So let's pop into the game and give them a go. Open left panel. Open top panel. Open right panel. Look ahead. Nice and easy. Open inventory. Open modules. That's me doing it on the POTAS. Go to ship. Go to status. Go to squadron feed. Go to history. Go to chat. Open transactions. Go to contacts. Go to target. Nothing happens because we haven't got ship targeted. 
if we now try and find a ship there we go now that's fully scanned so touch wood it should work go to target and there we got oh there we go it worked it took a second but it worked look ahead if we take that off of there go to contacts go to transactions go to navigation look ahead there you go this does work with the SRV as well and because the panels don't reset when you disembark in the SRV it just stays the same so if you're on Stasis, for example, when you disembark in SLV, it will still be on status when you get out. And there you go, that's panel tracking. I've done what I can to mitigate any problems, but I'm sure there'll be a good one or two comes up, but at least you know how to reset them. And now we can track where we are on the panels, it makes doing other commands easier. So you wanted to enable auto landing. When now we know where we are, we can make a command up to say enable auto land, and it'll go to the correct tab go down and then we can then move to there or maybe you wanted to turn something off on modules we know we can get to the modules tab and we can then go through to wherever we need to go to and turn off the module but if you found that useful let me know below thanks for watching and i hope you enjoyed the video see you in the next one take care and toodles